thanks for checking out my short guitar course from loser to bluser in 20 minutes. Um, I just thought that was kind of a, a silly title um, and a kind of a fun way to convey what this lesson is about. So basically what this is going to do is take you from somebody that doesn't really know much about soloing and about the blues to somebody that has at least some concepts and a grasp on what soloing with the blues is like and how to improvise. So that's kind of a key word there is, is learning how to improvise. So just a reminder, I've got my website up and running now, luthdrix.com. I've got a members area there. It does cost a few bucks to join. Um, if you'd like to be supportive, what I'm going to do is include the first half of this lesson here on YouTube, and then I'm going to in include the entire lesson on my website in the members area. I've currently got some other really cool stuff in the members area as well, so please feel free to go check that out. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the first part of this lesson, and then feel free to jump on over to my website if you're interested in learning the rest. All right, so just a heads up, the jam track that I was playing on top of at the beginning of this lesson is also going to be available on my website in the members area. So make sure to jump over there um, after we do the first half of this lesson here. Um, head on over if you want to, you know, have access to the jam track and try applying all the techniques that we've learned here. So let's first let's just tune up. So everything's in standard tuning. So let's go ahead and uh, and try uh, just tuning up here. So we've got our low E, and I might not be perfectly in tune here, but. A. D. G. B. then high E. So starting at the very, just very basic part of this whole concept of uh, soloing. So again, this is all in the key of A. So we're going to start with the basic A pentatonic box. And I'll put a diagram up here that you can follow. So basically, pentatonic is a five note scale. So it's five notes, but if you play it over six strings, then it has to repeat. So if we're playing two notes per string, you know, the scale is going to repeat moving up the strings. So if we start at the root note, so if we place our index finger on the fifth fret of the low E string, that's an A note. All right, so that's the root of the A pentatonic scale. So the next note is going to be your pinky reaching up here to the 8th fret of the low E. Okay, so we go 5th fret to 8th fret. Now we're going to move on to the A string. So your index finger is going to jump down here to 5th fret of the A string. Okay, so that's the 3rd note of the pentatonic scale. The 4th note, your ring finger is going to set right here on the 7th fret of the A. Next finger again is going to jump down so the fifth fret of the D. Okay, so that's also the fifth note so far. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if we're at the fifth note, the next note we're going to play is going to be the root note again. So your ring finger is going to set down here on the seventh fret of the D. So that again is an A note. All right, so we've got an A note here and an A note here. Now it's good to keep an eye on where your root notes are because a lot of times it's good to start a um, improvised solo phrase on a root note or end on a root note. 
it's good to start or end on an A note. And the reason for that is it just kind of makes the phrase sound correct because it's starting and ending on the key of the song. So it just makes for a really good way to, to do things. It's not the only way, but it's one way. So again, we've got one, two, three, four, five, and then we're back to root. So continuing up from here, and notice your index finger is always in fifth fret. So index finger, fifth fret of G, okay? So now one, two, I'm gonna go up to the third note, ring finger, seventh fret of the G, index finger, fifth fret of the B, okay? So that's one, two, three, four, all right? Now we're gonna get up to that fifth note with our pinky again, reaching up to that eighth fret, okay? All right, now the next, since that's the fifth note, you guessed it, the next note is a root again. So index finger, fifth fret of high E, that's an A note as well. So we've got an A note here, an A note here, and an A note here, all right? So that's pretty much the entire scale repeated a couple times. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. And if you want to continue up, at least to the next note, you can add your pinky on the eighth fret of the high E. So, so that makes for a killer um, workout right there. So if you're really looking to build some chops on the guitar and you don't have much scale experience, well, this is it right here. This is really gonna kind of change your world if you practice this a lot. So what you wanna do is just practice walking up and down the scale. So. And there's no rule about how fast or slow you go. Um, if you're just beginning, you might take like a couple seconds or more even between notes just to make sure you're hitting each note nice and solid and you're hitting the right note that's almost more important than going fast so I would say really focus on just going slow at first okay so basically we know the scale now but we don't really know how to apply it so now I'm gonna show you just a couple of basic little techniques here. So what you wanna do, what I did to start my solo out um, over the track was I started with a hammer on to a root note. So what I did was start on the D string and I hammered from fifth fret to seventh fret. So my index finger sets down on fifth fret of the D and then your ring finger you pluck and hammer on the seventh fret of the D. So what that's doing is what I had mentioned, um, how you kind of focus on those root notes while you're learning how to improvise because it kind of creates a phrase that makes sense to the ear. So that's a really good way to kind of get into it, all right? So that's one of the techniques, all right? So what you could try to do is, um, Basically, once you, once you learn some of these simple techniques, you could go get the jam track and just kind of mess around with some really simple stuff. Like one of the things you could try over the jam track is just walking up the scale on beat. You know, so you could be like... You know, just marching to the beat of the song while you're playing, the, walking up the scale. Now that's not much of a solo, that doesn't make for a very exciting solo, but it's the beginning concept of improvising and soloing. So what we wanna do is just kinda look at a couple other techniques. So here, we had the hammer on, had the hammer on to the A, um, the A note, so. Now, obviously, vibrato is a big technique. So the way I'm creating that vibrato there is by simply pulling the string down and letting it return. 
Now that's kind of exaggerated, so you don't want to move your vibrato too wide. You don't want to pull down too far. I mean, you can, but that's kind of a different, different technique to make things sound maybe a little more natural and a little more fitting. I kind of tend to think sometimes a little bit shorter vibrato is kind of the way to go, but it's all a matter of taste. So I've heard some guitar players do these huge vibratos, and sometimes I do, and it sounds great. It depends on the application. So moving on to a couple other little techniques here. So we've also got uh, a bend. So a really simple technique here that you can try is um, just bending with your ring finger on the seventh fret of the G, okay? Now in the key of A, bending on that seventh fret of the G is going to be a very um, sort of a very common sort of cliche that you've heard a lot um, in the key of A. If you've ever listened to some rock or blues, you've probably heard this. So if you take and you're gonna push the string upward towards towards the sky, okay? Now what I'm doing is actually using my index finger on the fifth fret, middle finger on the sixth fret, and then my ring finger sits on that seventh fret of the G. And you kind of use all three fingers to press upward. That makes the bend easier. One of the little riffs I did at the beginning was one that sounded like this. So let me show you that one. That's a really cool one to know. So if you bend up, then you're gonna take your index finger and set it down here so that it's barring the high E and the B string in the fifth fret. And then you're gonna pluck G and then high E. And then you're gonna set your pinky down on eighth fret of the B. And then you pull off. So, that gets us all the way back to uh, 7th fret of the G. So we're starting with a bend on 7th fret of the G, going to high E, pinky sets down on 8th fret of B, pull off to 5th fret of B. And then you're back to 7th fret of the G. So what that is, is going back to 5th fret of the B, 7th fret of the G, pull off to 5th fret of the G. And then, guess what? Ending on a root note, ending on that 7th fret of D, which is an A note. So that's kind of one of the fun little riffs that I used in the beginning 